Well, hello. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Coffee with Stephen. So this week's blog is titled simply Artificial Intelligence. And unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen over the last few weeks a lot of people talking about the potential dangers or pitfalls associated with the development of artificial intelligence. In fact, uh, very recently, there was a uh, Senate hearing where one of the lead developers of artificial intelligence was effectively begging the United States Senate to regulate their industry. Now, this is, uh, this is probably the first time in history where a, a for-profit industry was looking to have government oversight imposed on it. Um, artificial intelligence is something that scares people, including the developers of artificial intelligence. Now, a few weeks ago, I was doing a CCW class, and I had an individual that was in my course, and he is actually someone who's developing an artificial intelligence uh, platform that allows for, I'm not entirely sure I understand exactly the, 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 the developmental process of this, but effectively uh, using AI, it assists in filling out government and insurance forms. And then there's another factor of it that, you know, reads the form. So in a sense, we might actually have artificial intelligence filling out one side of the equation and then another artificial intelligence bot, you know, analyzing that information. Uh, I don't know what would happen when the two would argue with one another, but that's really beside the point. During the conversation, he said to me, yeah, I'm one of those individuals that's going to be putting a whole bunch of people out of work. And he said it somewhat tongue in cheek, but, you know, it, it did go into a deeper conversation. And, um, you know, I said, well, I had read that uh, 80% of the workforce is going to be displaced as a result of moving towards artificial intelligence. And he sort of acknowledge that that's probably going to be the case. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, well, you know, white collar jobs are really going to be the ones that are most affected. But he said, realistically speaking, uh, with the development of robotics, a lot of blue collar jobs could also be replaced by artificial intelligence as well. And I said, you know, <clears throat> throughout human history, there's always been technological advancements. And whenever there's technological advancements, there is, by definition, um, employment-related issues that start to manifest. When that takes place on a wide enough scale, you end up having revolutions. And revolutions usher in new political systems. Oftentimes, these political systems are enjoined with a new type of economic system. And I said... You know, if you have an 80% displacement of the human population, by definition, you're going to end up having a revolution, probably a bloody one, and the ushering in of a new economic system. And uh, this caused uh, a look of concern on his face. And he said, you, you think that AI will, will, you know, usher us into a form of socialism? And I said, no, no, actually, I don't. I don't think that it's going to be seen in the same types of terms that we currently see things from the standpoint of capitalism or socialism or Marxism. I think the concept of capital formation will become largely irrelevant. And as a result, we'll have an entirely new economic concept. In fact, we may not actually even be the ones who develop it. It might be artificial intelligence in and of itself. Um, in any event, it's, in my opinion, unbelievably terrifying, has a real serious implication for human development. It's not something, interestingly enough, that I'm advocating that we stop. Uh, like I said, I think technology moves forward regardless. Uh, and once it's been invented, it, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. That being said, uh, we have to be very, very cautious of both the, the human cost of artificial intelligence, and to be quite honest with you, the cosmological cost. You know, one of the things that's really, really fascinating to me as sort of an amateur theologian is that in order to have access to God, that requires a certain amount of intellectual struggle as well as faith. God is not directly accessible 
other than perceiving God's work around us, we don't have a direct communicative relationship with God. We have to tease out his messages. When we suddenly have the capability of having artificial intelligence essentially giving us the answers, we now have a directly accessible God. And this is fraught with a lot of problems because, like all things, we tend to go towards the easiest answer. And if we have to look for God in our universe, or alternatively, we can look for our phones and talk to God directly through our pockets, um, it's going to have some implications. Anyways, I do encourage you to read the blog. As always, train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.